So what we have before us here is uh, the famous Turing King list. This is a papyrus that is approximately 3,200 years old and it records roughly one and a half thousand years worth of kings who ruled approximately from, from 3100 BC until around 1600 BC. So it's an incredible old document recording incredibly old kings. And uh, it goes even further back, those are the historical kings, but it uh, also includes the mythological rulers of Egypt, so ideally taking us back tens of thousands of years. Um, it is a unique document. We don't have any other king list of this type from ancient Egypt uh, written in the Egyptian script. There's one comparable text from uh, the early Hellenistic period, but it doesn't survive on any papyrus, only in uh, medieval manuscripts and, and, and much later um, um, copies. One of the great challenges in working with the king list is that um, it has been reconstructed a number of times. None of the reconstructions are perfect, uh, and that is because of its state of preservation. It consists of uh, a few hundred fragments, um, many of them quite small. Uh, you can actually see a, a, a few fragments here that certainly belong to the king list. There are also fragments here that we have removed today. They do not belong to the fragments. Uh, they probably come from the side of, of, of the El Medina. And so one of the challenges is finding out exactly which fragments do belong and which ones do not belong. And once we have an idea of what belongs, the task is then to try to find the location of little fragments like that. And there is almost an endless number of uh, possibilities. Um, if, if we're working with well-known text, we will, of course, be able to place the fragments very easily. Uh, and if we're working with literary text, there's a kind of logic in the lines. There is an expected grammar, uh, sentence structures, and so forth. But this is just a long list of kings and numbers, uh, the length of their reigns. And so when we find a fragment with two or three numbers, the, the possibilities are almost uh, limitless. Some of the fragments um, add new names of unknown kings. They're still important for us uh, because they mainly belong to parts of Egyptian history that is little known to us. Uh, but we also have fragments that uh, belong to kings that are known and sometimes they have uh, historical importance. So um, a couple of years ago I was able to join a fragment of a king of the 13th dynasty uh, which meant we had to revise the established chronology of the early part of that pyramid and also indirectly redate one of the few pyramids uh, from that era. So we, we also find that kind of um, um, information. They also included all the kings known to them, whether they were male or female, whether they had a, a good renown or, or a bad reputation. So the so-called Hyksos rulers, for instance, uh, are included. Um, they're down here, this is this, the, the first foreign rulers to uh, occupy Egypt and rule Egypt, um, which is sort of a societal trauma in, in later times in Egypt, so they are included. And they also include uh, petty kings that rule for very short periods of times. Uh, so an example of, of that is, for instance, this king here. He's a king called Sekeba Enri, who is unknown to, even to most Egyptologists, I feel fairly sure. And he had a reign of zero years, two months, and then he had either one, two, three, or four days. So his entire rule was between 61 and 65 days. 